You guys have been begging me for this video. So we are here finally to talk about a simplified lighting tutorial. Now this video, I'm gonna stay away from too many sciencey things. I'm really gonna give you the basics on lights. If you want a more technical video, go find it. There's a ton on YouTube. This is for those of you that literally just want a cut and dry answer to how to light your gall darn plants. So let's get into it. First thing we need to talk about is colors. There are the white lights and there is the blurple lights. What is the difference between the two and which one should you select? Well, the truth is sunlight works on three main colors, red, blue, and green. A white light means all of these colors are kind of placed together. So blue, red, and green with a higher emphasis on the blue. Now this all purpose means that it's going to work for cuttings and seedlings all the way up to fruits and flowering. A blurple light is more so focusing on the blue and the red, not so much the green, which means they put a large emphasis on recovery of plants. So blurples are tend to be a little bit cheaper than the white lights, and that is because the white lights are full spectrum. Now, if you are propagating house plants, starting or germinating seeds and seedlings indoors, and you don't intend to indoor garden, then going for that cheaper blurple light may be best case scenario for you because it works great for that. The blue light, regardless regardless if it's in the sun, the full spectrum, or the blurple, is completely dedicated to leaf growth. It's meant for chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green stuff. Chlorophyll is the green stuff that aids in photosynthesis and sun capture. So if we want to rehab a plant or we want to germinate or a seedling and put on more green growth, it would make sense that we want to accentuate with the blue light. On the other side, we have red light and red light helps encourage root growth. So something that's been cut or propagated and you're looking for more roots would do best under a red light. Now, the reason why I don't own any blurple lights other than my kind of arrow garden that comes with it is because I want a full spectrum. If I want to set up a light, I don't want to have to change the dang light partway through the plant's growing life if I'm gardening indoors. So I always go for full spectrum. Yes, they're a little bit more money, but in my case, it works well. Plus, when you have full grown adult house plants, they need the white light. They don't need the purple light. You only need the purple light if you are propagating or if you have a rehab area like an injured plant or a mother plant. Otherwise, you you want all three. The second thing we need to consider is lumens. Now, most lights are LED and I am going to push you in the LED direction. I have some fluorescents. Don't love them. They wear out over time. They don't work as well. LEDs that I've had just keep trucking along. They don't tend to wear out. I've never had to replace any fluorescent. You will have to replace the bulb. They kind of lose their effectiveness. So when we're looking at LED lights, there will be lumens on the packaging or on the Amazon on listing. And what we're looking for is 3000 lumens per square foot, minimum, minimum. You can go higher than that. And if you end up higher than that, you want to make sure there is a dimmer or that the height is adjustable. Because if you start getting over the 3000 lumens, you can run potential risk of burning your plants in particular for seedlings and cuttings. So you want to be able to adjust that accordingly. The next thing to look at is PPFD. So this is photosynthetic proton flux proton flux density is what this stands for and there's a number of different things that go into making up this term but what it's telling you is how much light is concentrated on an area and this is key depending on what you're growing or how you're growing your plant so what you would want if you're doing seedlings or cuttings is anywhere between 300 and 500 ppfd if you're doing adult plants or fruit and flowering plants you want it to have 600 to a thousand PPFD. Now this is when a dimmer comes into play because if you can get a light that has a PPFD that does the lower range all the way to the higher range with a dimmer, we can adjust that accordingly to allow for our seedlings. But again, if you're just doing this for seed starting, which is going to be starting here actually pretty soon, which is kind of exciting. What you want to look at is simply a blurple light that maximum 600 PPFD done. It's going to be a cheaper light than a full spectrum with all the bells and whistles. What I would tell you is not to stress the heights or the specifics of the light. Find a light that's in your budget first off. Ensure it's full spectrum and then look at the lumens. That will be easy to find and I'll leave some listings down below that fall in that category for a number of different price ranges. From there, follow the instructions on the label. No one knows 
that light better than the QC program that put the light together. They don't want you to burn your plants and return it, and they don't want negative reviews. So they're gonna tell you the God's on its truth when it comes to height and just where that actual light should be placed. So keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to running time or photo period of the plant, this is truly going to depend on the type of plant you're growing. A good rule of thumb is between 12 and 18 hours. Between 12 and 18 hours actually is going to come down to how much adequate light you're getting. If you're getting adequate sunlight from a window, for six of that 18 hours, then you only need to run the grow light for the remaining portion. And I guess this is kind of where the sensor has helped me, the sensor that we designed, is that it lets me know if my adequate lighting is falling or if I'm going to meet my hour allotment for that day. If I don't meet my hour allotment, I know that I can turn on the light for cloudy days or just in general, get more light to that plant by either moving it or whatever the case is. But if you don't have a plant sensor, just use some common sense. If you know that the sun sets and only gets direct sun in that area for about three hours, then you will need to supplement the rest of that day. So the current lights that I'm all running right now are Mars Hydros. I have the SP500 doing my plants and it has a little bit higher emphasis on red light, which just means more root growth and it works great for my house plants. I also have the TS1000 times two. I have two TS1000s. These are the lights that I got Nate to use. Now the TS1000 that I had from the olden days does not have a dimmer, but it has the adjustable height. I now have the TS1000 with the dimmer on it and I personally really love it. It is a full spectrum and I have it cranked pretty darn low because it is a very intense light with a very large footprint, shockingly enough. Anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more lighting questions, really specific ones, be sure to drop that down below. The community here at Gardening in Canada is very knowledgeable. So if I don't answer the question because I get a ton of comments here lately on the channel, then someone else is definitely gonna be able to help you with their setups. And be sure to continue to send me videos of your guys' setups or photos of your setups over on Instagram because I do really enjoy seeing them. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.